Hello students and welcome to Reading Workshop for Wednesday, November 11, 2020. Before we get, we are going to be discussing varieties of English today. Before we get started, let's go over the materials that you will need for today. The materials you will need are your pencil, your reading journal, and your my book. If you don't have these materials, go ahead and pause the video, collect the supplies, and then come back and press play. Okay, welcome back. Our objectives for this lesson are, I will explain the varieties of English. We will recognize how an author uses dialect to help readers understand characters. You will use your knowledge of varieties of English to complete the Know It, Show It, page 93. Readers, there are varieties of English, meaning that there are different ways we speak and write depending upon our audience. For example, we use informal language when we're speaking to our friends and family. We might use words like yeah or cool to express or expressions like that was a piece of cake. Characters in a story might also use informal language when they speak. When we use formal language, we are usually speaking to someone important or writing something important. Formal language does not use slang or colorful expressions, and the words are more precise. So, formal language includes proper grammar, sounds polishes, polished and respectful. It's used when giving a speech or presentation or even writing an essay. You can use it also when speaking to teachers or other adults. With formal language, you would say something along the lines of, today I'd like to speak to you about weather patterns. With informal language, this is language that might include slang or colorful expressions. It's very conversational. It's used when writing a character's dialogue in a story or speaking to friends and family. Instead of saying, today I'd like to speak to you about weather patterns, like as in formal language, informal language would sound something like this. Dude, the weather has been crazy. Dialect includes the specific sayings and pronunciations from a particular culture or region. Writers use dialect and stories to develop their characters. There are many different ways to say hello. Hi, you. Howdy, y'all. Hey, guys. What's up? G'day, mate. How do you do? The dialect and the way that someone says hello would really depend on their particular culture or region that they live in or that they're from. Readers, today I want to show you how authors use varieties of English in the text that we've been reading one writer, one way a writer develops their characters is through the use of dialect. For example, a character might say, I ate them apples, or he cracked his head. I want you to turn to page 292 in your my book and follow along as I read, and I want you to underline the examples of dialect in paragraph 26. Go ahead and pause and get ready to do this. Okay, now that you're ready, follow along as I read and underline any examples of dialect that you might see. I'm starting at paragraph 26. Well now, that's quite a feat. Moving cattle beasts along like that, mind you, nothing like a drop of rain to get a man moving. Uncle Jacob laughed as we wove the last of the straw in into the roof. Now remember, when I was a young'un, no older than you, we saw a dilly of a storm heading up. My brother and I were running around, fastening shutters and bolting doors when we heard a tarnation big racket headed our way. Up our lane come a farm rig, horses running like Jehu, all wild-eyed and foaming at the mouth, wagon bouncing along behind like a pea on a hot skillet. Run away, my brother shouts. 
Then we hear the driver screaming, Open the doors! Open the doors! We jumped pretty smart, I can tell you. Swung open those big barn doors and drove the whole rig in just seconds before a great crack of thunder. And did those clouds pour rain? I looks in the wagon and sees 300 weight of flour and linen sacks. A few drops of rain and the whole lot would have caked solid. That man never was any good at reading the weather. Uncle Jacob, Jacob ended scornfully. Well, there's your stacked roof in. No fear of rain getting through that. Did you find any examples of dialect? I hope you did. One example of dialect in paragraph 26 was this bottom line here where Uncle Jacob said, well, there's your stacked roof in. No fear of rain and getting through that. I hope you found many others as well. Now that we've identified the examples of dialect, when I say go, I want you to pause the video and reread page 292. Pay close attention to the dialect of Uncle Jacob. When you have finished reading page 292, come back and press play. Go now. Okay, did you read it? I hope so. Now that you're back, I wanna ask you a question. What does the dialect that you read tell you about Uncle Jacob? Think about that for a second. The di Take a moment, pause the video and answer this question in your reading journal or on your My Notes side of page 292. Okay, the dialect tells us that Uncle Jacob lived long ago and probably wasn't very well educated. We can see this by the way he says certain, certain phrases and certain ways he talks. Like when he's, he runs words together like no older than you and youngin. He's not using proper English and sometimes he says things that don't really flow the way they would if they were saying said in proper English form or in formal English. He speaks with slang terms and very informally. What did you think? I can't wait to find out. All right. Now remember, today and every day when you read, pay close attention to the varieties of English the author may use. Now it's your turn to show me what you know. I want you to complete the Know It, Show It page 93 and turn it in to your teacher how they instruct you to. Have fun reading and working hard. Keep up the good work. Have a great day.